Welcome to this week's episode. What is account-based marketing and does it work in aviation? That's a heck of a good question. So I'm Paula Williams. Actually, there's two questions. <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm John Williams. And we are ABCI and ABCI's mission is... Now, hopefully you ladies and gentlemen out there in the aviation world sell more products and services. Absolutely. So ABM is all the rage these days, and this was actually John's idea, this episode, right? Uh, I beg your pardon. I just brought the topic up. Exactly. And said, uh, we should probably be talking about this and uh, what it means and everything else. So uh, what is it, and uh, will it work in aviation, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So this episode is brought to you by our Aviation Sales and Marketing Lab. Uh, and if you join by January 31st uh, of 2020, Happy New Year, by the way. Yep. Um, you will be included in our Aviation Sales Basics course, which uh, is just getting started this month. We start a new course uh, a couple times a year just to make sure that we've got some people starting at the same time and we're able to accommodate some folks in the industry who are maybe getting into sales for the first time from somewhere sales else. Sales aviation. Right, exactly. Coming from a different field than aviation or coming from aviation but have never done sales before, either way. Well, they don't realize they haven't done sales, but if you're in any profession, you are doing sales every day you walked into the work site, at the cockpit or the job or whatever. Absolutely. You're selling something. Right. Selling uh-huh. something to your passengers or your boss. ATC. (laughs) ATC. (laughs) Or your kids or somebody. (laughs) Chances are you're doing sales of some kind because you're trying to persuade somebody of something and you're probably pretty good at it if you just uh, think about it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, this is our online course and coaching uh, and it's included in our sales and marketing lab which is our tools, skills, and networking uh, system that is really put together to help people in aviation become successful in the least expensive way possible, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Cool. All right. So, what the heck is ABM? Well, the words are mm-hmm. account-based marketing. Exactly. Now. Mm-hmm. So, it's funny how, you know, a lot of times they will take a concept that is a thousand years old or longer, you know, could be probably more like 6,000 years old. In some cases. As long as people have been roaming the earth and they will make a new word for something that people have been doing for a really long time. True. Uh, And account-based marketing is really something along those lines. People have been doing it for a really long time in business-to-business sales and other things. It's just that they haven't called it account-based marketing or ABM. And, uh, you know, this is kind of a new term that's making the rounds in the business magazines and other places. And so we thought we would kind of define it and show where it fits in the concept of all of the possible ways of doing sales and how it fits with what we do and what we teach, right? Uh-huh. Okay. Basically, if you put one-to-one sales on one side and mass marketing on the other side of a continuum, ABM is closer to the left, um, closer to the first side that we mentioned. It's closer to the one-to-one sales that we talked about. So True. basically, you're defining an account... <coughs> And you're thinking just about that person. How do we personalize this and make it really super specific to mm-hmm. this this one client or this one prospect? And it's kind of a reaction, I think, to a lot of the automation that's been going on over the last 10 years. And everybody is trying to sell everything to everybody. And you're getting completely irrelevant stuff in your inbox and, and everywhere else, right? And, I mean, I'm getting, I'm getting ready to... Uh block some accounts from known industries that are sending me emails four times a day trying to sell their crap. Right, and it's not very personalized and it's not very specific and people are calling you on the phone saying that your computer's extended warranty is about to expire. They have no idea even if you have a computer, much less if it has an extended warranty that's about to expire, right? Yeah, I've got a car that's almost an antique now. They tell me my warranty's about to expire. Right. Oh, you think? Right. So they're basically playing the odds and uh, playing a numbers game. And, you know, that's the mass marketing side of the spectrum. And and ABM is really on the other side of the spectrum. So um, in aviation, we like it a whole lot better. Of course. Okay. So does it work? 
Uh, and this is from the Altera group. 97% said ABM had a somewhat higher or much higher ROI than other marketing initiatives. And uh, the reason is because you can really devote your resources, your time and energy and, and money toward a smaller group. So um, <coughs> what we want to do with ABM or um, what we used to call top 10 marketing, what we still call top 10 marketing, quite <laughs> frankly, with top 10 campaigns, <coughs> is to concentrate our energy on a very small group of people. In this case, maybe 10. Uh, you know, your results may vary, your situation may be different depending on what you're trying to do and what your, your goals are. But 10 is a really good number, I think, for account-based marketing because it really lets you focus on these 10 people. Think about them day and night, you know, <laughs> and uh, really get to know them, uh, get to know their company, learn more about them, and uh, <coughs> figure out what they need uh, and what you can offer and how it's better than the competition for exactly. that specific customer, right? Right. Okay. Okay, so will it work for aviation? It absolutely will. In a lot of cases, our uh, markets are so small, uh, especially for really specific products and services. You know, we we work with Turbine Zinc, who does PT6A engine uh, overhauls and uh, you know some other things. But their their market <coughs> for that particular service is super concentrated, right? Uh -huh. And so then if you take the, the, the customers that have PT6A engines and you take the ones that have the greatest number of PT6A engines, you can narrow that down pretty specifically to 10 companies. And then we had a client that was in the, uh, how do I say this, repossession? Mm -hmm. And they had a universe of possible prospects of 65 Right, because of the specific <coughs> aircraft type and situation, financial situation that those people had to be in in order to be qualified customers for the right. service. So the more specific your product or service, the more you should be thinking in terms of ABM. Right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. All right. So we're going to go through a sample ABM campaign, and if this were a year ago and we had not heard the term ABM before, if it had not become the fashionable thing, we'd be calling this a top 10 campaign, and we probably still will call this a top 10 campaign, because that's always worked for us, right? Uh-huh. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So every campaign, every successful campaign, has three elements. And you see them. Right. The or if you can't see them, they're list offer and presentation. The list, the offer, and the presentation. And most marketing companies are going to focus just on the presentation and assume that you've got the list and the offer all figured out. Um, we don't assume that. In most cases, we find that there are some ways that we can tweak that to make your campaign work better. Uh, absolutely, on the offer, and uh, generally speaking, on the list as well. Exactly. So, yes, every campaign has these three elements. If you've ever had a marketing campaign flop, uh, we can bet that one of these elements was either not planned well or um, planned incorrectly or based on some incorrect So is this based on your experience with ABCI or on a previous <laughs> company? Yes, all of the above. Um, you know, we've had our share of flops just as everyone else. And, you know, pr prior to working with aviation, I worked in the finance, finance industry and uh, I even worked in a toy store at one time. Uh, but every campaign... <laughs> does depend on these three elements, uh -huh. list, offer, and presentation. All right, so let's talk first about the list, right? So what we want to do is identify our top 10 most wanted prospects. Now, this is not rocket science, but there is... But if you don't have them, you should identify them before you ever get to here. Right, exactly. So how do you do that? I'm quite sure you're going to explain it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> There is some automation that you can use to uh, to narrow things down based on demographics, based on finances, based on company size, based on geography, based on aircraft type, and all of those things. And so some of the sources that you might use for things like that are some uh, mailing list companies, uh, list brokers will help you narrow this down. You can use your social media, actually, to identify and narrow down some of these things. Um, some of the back-end tools in some and of the depending media upon media. what you're selling you might use DOM magazine right or uh, private pilot exactly look for people who are advertising in their AOPA right um, there's lots of ways to identify 
um, the demographics of your ideal customer. So you put together the, you know, what are we looking for geographically, financially, uh, aircraft type, and, you know, whatever other categories we want to put that in. We use whatever tools we can. Um, we use JetNet, AirPack, um, you know, a lot of the social media back-end tools and things like that mm -hmm. to identify people. And that will give you a list. But then what you want to do is go through that list as a human being. Exactly. Right? And cherry pick the ones that you really <coughs> want to have as customers because aviation is a small world and you know that there are some people that you would rather work with than others, right? You use automation, you'll come up with a list of hundreds and you want to narrow that down to the top 10. Top 10, exactly. So if you can narrow it down as far as you can using the automated tools and then um, pick the people that you really, <coughs> really want to work with and that might be because of name recognition, you know, you'd love to have them as a, a reference client. Uh, you know, maybe people that you have heard are really great to work with, uh, people that you've always dreamed of having as a client, uh, those kinds of things, because that's more motivating for you anyway, if they're people that you really And as soon as you with. sell one or two or three, then you go pick one or two or three back from that original list, mm -hmm. or run the automation again and mm -hmm. reselect. Exactly. So that's how you pick your, your list, and it is okay to play favorites, right? You don't have to take what the machine gives you uh, because machines aren't that smart yet. They can tell you, you know, what's in the demographics and everything else, but there might be some that fall just outside that range that you'll want to look at right? for different reasons, you know. And then that's why you're smarter than the machine. Right. And this is the really cool thing about using really small numbers is that you can spend some time doing this and uh, looking through it by hand, right? Absolutely. All right. Okay, so that's your list. You now have your top 10. We're ready to move on. Right? If not, press pause. <laughs> and go back and redo. Get a pencil. Get your top 10 list. And, you know, you may know these off the top of your head. If you've been working in this industry for a long time, you know who the players are. Um, if you're brand new, you might want to use some of those automated tools and things like that to, uh, to help you out. But get your top 10 before you proceed, and then we'll carry on. And if you don't know how to do any of that, call us and we'll help. Exactly. We do this a lot in people's office hours. Mm -hmm. Okay. The offer. Um, what can you offer these 10 prospects? So now that you've got a list of 10, you will notice some common things about them. You'll notice they have some pretty common problems, uh, pretty common frustrations. You know, what is it about these 10 people that you can really help with better mm -hmm. than any of your competitors and so on? Uh, and that's the next thing is you want to compare it with what other things are on the market and why should they choose you rather than them. Which is what you have to tell them. Exactly. So you want to get this really solid in your head before you pick up the phone, right? Yep. Because they're going to ask you, you know, how does this compare to X, Y, or Z? And you're going to want to have a really good answer. Uh, not to bash the competition because, you know, aviation is a small world. We don't want to throw any stones in glass houses. Nope. But we do want to know why our, our product is better uh, than the competitors. Uh, and then the third thing is how can you add urgency? Because even if they think it's a great idea, even if they agree, <coughs> okay, this is, this is wonderful. Uh, let's talk about this next year when I feel like I have time to mm -hmm. think about it. Um, so if you can find some way to add <coughs> urgency, either because of an FAA requirement or a deadline or a tax thing or, you know, something that's going on that's going to be an advantage for them to move forward quickly. If you're installing ADS-B right now in airplanes, <coughs> yeah. and, you, and you have uh, some some uh, availability, we should be able to sell that pretty easily. Yeah, some built-in urgency. <coughs> right. Right. If not, you might need to manufacture some urgency or look for some other reasons for urgency. Maybe you've got some folks with some downtime right now, so you can give people a little bit of a, um, a scheduling priority or uh, throw in a, <coughs> an incentive to get started sooner rather than later. Yeah, it happens to everybody, including us. Sometimes we have not a downtime, but a time when we all of a sudden we're going 90 to nothing and we slowed down to 80 and we said, wait a minute. Mm-hmm. We can do something else. Right, and we've got all of these you know, web developers and uh, graphic artists and people who are already revved up working on something, and then that project ends, and then suddenly we're like, we need something for these guys to do so that they don't... Uh, we plan not to let them end without something else to do, but on occasion... Mm -hmm. They get finished early, or something happens, the project gets canceled, you know, it happens. Or even it wasn't as difficult as we expected. Right, that's true. <clears throat> okay. 
So that's the offer. We did the list, we got our top 10, we figured out what to offer them, and now we're moving on to the presentation, right? Uh-huh. Okay. And this is where most people think that marketing starts, but actually marketing start, it started three steps ago, right? Yep. Okay. So uh, we like to start with something like a very personalized letter. Uh, you know, this says, I know this about your company, and I really admire this about your company. Um, here are some things that uh, you should know based on, on what we know about you. Uh, and here's how we would like to, uh, you know, maybe begin a conversation about whether this could be of value to you. Besides, the fact that you took the time to research their company will get their attention at least. Yeah, this is not the robocall, right? Right. This is the total opposite of that. Uh, you want to show some definite... Uh, Definite homework here, so that you're not wasting their time. Um, we like to use a direct mail package that's going to stand out in their mail. Uh, we like three-dimensional objects that are sent in a box rather than a, a letter. This helps get past the gatekeeper. Uh, we've talked about this before. A lot of people will leave instructions with their admin uh, <coughs> staff and things like that. Um, you know, discard anything that looks like an advertisement, but send me all packages or all personal letters and things like that. So you want this to look like a package and or a personal letter. Uh, packages are super easy <coughs> to do, even if you send candy or a toy airplane or um, anything uh, that's going to get their attention and stand out in their, their mail. And if after some amount of time they still haven't and you're mm -hmm. really into it, we have a gentleman that uh, told us the story that <clears throat> After I don't know some number of months, mm -hmm. they still hadn't responded. He he boxed up a trash can, right, <laughs> and sent it to them. Had it delivered by courier, actually, <laughs> a galvanized shiny silver <laughs> trash can, right? He said, "Here, this mm -hmm. is so you can put all of our email, all of our mail into it that I've sent to you." You've been and they responded to him. Yeah, they did, and actually, he ended up getting. Uh, Getting an appointment and, and getting the work because you know he was so persistent and so creative and right. and things. So you know you may want to go to that extent, but if you can start with something clever or something cool or even something that um, uh, just stands out in their email is really the the main thing. Thing number one is to get it opened. <coughs> thing number two is to get it read so that they know that this is something you've done some homework on. Right. right. Okay. Um, events are a wonderful thing for these top 10 type folks. Invite them to a breakfast that you're having at a, um, a convention or, uh, you know, go see them. Even at a convention, mm -hmm. <clears throat> we do that. Oh, yeah. We do that uh, with... At MBAA, every, it's different in every place where we do it and how, mm -hmm. but we do it. Exactly. Um, so, you know, those events, especially if you're spending over $10,000 on, on an annual contract or something like that, for that kind of money, people want to see you in person and shake your hand and look you in the eye, right? Um, so events are a really great way to, to do that, either with existing conventions and things or by making a special trip out there, mm -hmm. right? Get your butt on a plane. That's what aviation is all about. Yeah, or <laughs> when we go to MBAA like last time in Florida... I think we should do that every year. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. We did uh, in-person <clears throat> visits to prospects and, and current clients. Um, you know, we made a road trip out of it, which was actually a lot of fun. Yeah, we were just going to do a road trip just for the heck of it. And then she said, you know, we're going right by. Yeah. So then we did modified it and hit all of the clients on the East Coast. Mm hmm Absolutely, and some of them we have been clients for years and we've never met, um, so that's an exception to the rule. But for the most part, I think we sell a lot more when we've actually shaken somebody's hand and uh -huh. been in the same room with somebody. Uh, phone calls. So this is where the phone call comes in handy, and we've got a sales call checklist that you want to make sure that you're super prepared for that call, and this is not going to be a waste of that person's time to pick up the phone and talk to you, right? Right. Okay. Um, so, not the robocalls, but the very customized <coughs> calls. Um, client appreciation events. This is a thing that we have a whole article about on our website, where we talk about uh, once a year, uh, a lot of our clients will throw a customer appreciation event where they invite all of their current customers, and then they will invite, you know, they shoot for a, a mix. I think we figured out the ideal mix is about 75% happy customers versus 25% prospects. Right. So then you have prospects surrounded by 
happy customers, uh, people that they can ask questions of, uh, you know, people who are going to be talking about you, of course, since that's what they have in common uh, at this event. And so, you know, if you can get everybody together for a barbecue or um, any kind of a, a customer. Breakfast. Yeah, breakfast. <laughs> $100 hamburger or whatever it is that you do. <clears throat> Um, you know, make sure that that is, is something where you can invite the right ratio of people and uh, maybe do that once a year. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's a, another fantastic addition to a, a top 10 or ABM campaign, right? Yes. Okay. So here's an example of an ABM campaign. Uh, so this person, um, we set this up for, for someone uh, and this is the, the outline that they are following. So week one, they send a direct mail package, and this particular one had a balsa wood toy airplane, right, uh, with a personalized letter and everything else. So, you know, didn't spend a ton of money, but uh, spent some time <clears throat> and thought to put these together and make them into a nice package. And they sent them in these uh, priority mail small envelope or small uh, boxes mm -hmm. for USPS. So you can do whatever you like, but as long as it stands out from their regular run-of-the-mill advertisements in the mail. And you need to realize, if you don't already, that customer acquisition costs money. Oh, yeah. And the nice thing about <coughs> ABM, or a top 10 list, is you can spend $10 per um, per top 10, or per name on that list, and only spend $100. You could spend $100 on every name on that list and only spend $1,000, which is really not a, a ton of money. <coughs> in the vast scheme of, of your marketing budget, right? Right, it shouldn't be anyway. Exactly. So, you know, keeping the number small will help you make this super personalized and a lot more classy on the, the front end, right? So week one, direct mail package. Week two, a personal phone call. And this was just basically, did you get my package? You know, are there any questions that we can answer for you? And, oh, by the way, we're having a breakfast that we'd like to invite you to. Right. And, uh, you know, so that's basically not a salesy call. It's just an introduction. Um, those kinds of things give you an excuse to, <clears throat> to make that phone call without it being a, an immediate sales pitch. Yes. Okay. Week three, breakfast. <laughs> right? Uh, and, you know, this may, I think this actually did have a little bit more time between week two and week three, but we're condensing for the purpose of the podcast, right? Uh-huh. Okay. Um, you have breakfast with them and you send a, uh, a thank you note. Uh, and then over breakfast, you are basically presenting um, your material and you're, you're presenting your offer. And these are guidelines. I mean, timing week one, week two, it could be two or three weeks in between. It just depends on mm -hmm. how the flow goes. Right. And you need to figure out what that is and go with it. Right. So, you know, you could do four weeks, you could do 12 <coughs> weeks, um, you know, whatever makes sense for your cadence of sales and how many people you have working with you and what resources you have and, and everything else. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then send a personal thank you note after the breakfast, usually the day of or the day after you mm -hmm. send that note. And then week four, do a follow-up appointment. You know, I know you probably have more questions than answers at this point. Let's let's follow up and do a more personalized um, uh, meeting, you know, where we can really do some discovery on what you really need and get down to uh, get down to solutions. Yeah, because at breakfast uh, you will have had discussions as they will have and you will probably have already said we need to get together again. So they're just doing a follow-up on that. To schedule that, exactly. So uh -huh. all of that is, is fairly neatly laid out. Adapt this, steal it, you know, do whatever you like with this plan. Uh, and like I said, you can do it in four weeks, you can do it in 12, whatever you think is, is appropriate. But you want to think in terms of super personalized, super classy, non-pushy, uh, right. and and all of those things. So as a result of this campaign, at any point during this <laughs> four to 12 week process, you're going to hear one of three responses, right? And they're all okay. And they're all okay. Every, any response is a good response. Of course. Right. Um, so because your ultimate purpose is to discover if this is a, a good customer for you uh, uh -huh. or not and uh, carry on from there. So if the answer is yes, Woohoo! Right. Make a sale. Make a sale, and carry on doing fantastic customer service and and all of those things. So you don't just drop this person and make sure there's a good, good <laughs> no, handoff. No. Right. You don't yeah. just celebrate and then drop them. Never no. talk to them again. Nope. Okay. Not that'd be bad. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So a yes, obviously you made a sale. Congratulations. That's a wonderful thing. Uh, a no is a perfectly fine response as well. Um, so you replace that person on your top ten list. 
uh, with another prospect. So you go back to whatever source you got your names and from. And then you don't waste any more time on them. Exactly. They come off your list. Um, you know, if they're absolutely not ever going to be interested for whatever reason, then, you know, they come off your list. If it is not a no necessarily, but a not now, um, that's fine too. You just put them into your holding pattern. And everybody in aviation knows what a holding pattern is. Yeah, right. That's when <laughs> you want to land, but usually when you have to go to the bathroom and you want to land, and <laughs> ATC has other plans for you, uh, and says you have to get behind all these other people, so go cool your heels in a holding pattern, right? Yeah, you're showing uh, your place, though, because most jets have a thing in the back that you can go use. Oh, that's true. But anyway. Um, so the... the my, the smaller um, airplanes, you're right. <laughs> exactly. Being the uh, <clears throat> small plane pilot, you uh, you know even adapt. The, even the single pilot, like all the way up to the CJ4, <laughs> your single pilots, you still have the same issue. Exactly. So uh, you get put into a holding pattern, and we have a holding pattern in marketing as well. And basically, what that means is that person will be interested at some point in the future. Right. So you which keep... is why they said not now. Exactly. So you keep sending them. Uh, birthday cards and sending them newsletters and uh, you know maybe when you have an event or something you invite them other things like that because you know at some point in the future it might be 10 years from now that will become a customer mm -hmm. okay so uh, not now is a perfectly fine response as well so this really takes the fear out of the whole sales process it should yeah because you know at the end of four weeks you're going to have one of, of three responses yes no or not now mm -hmm. and any of those responses is a good one Absolutely. Right, because you've worked through that prospect, you've gotten them processed through your list, you've made a friend, hopefully, uh, or at least you know someone now knows about your products and services that didn't before that might be a good referral source. It even works when you're asking somebody out for coffee. <laughs> I know. <laughs> was I in a holding pattern? Is that what it was? Is it not now? <laughs> Evidently. <laughs> right. Okay, yeah, we had a really long uh, sales cycle when John first asked me out. Um, there was a really long sales cycle involved for a lot of reasons, but that was uh, not the least of which is that we worked for competing companies. <laughs> but anyway. At the same client. At the same client. <laughs> so that was not awkward at all. <laughs> but yeah, we, that went into a holding pattern. <laughs> we eventually went out for coffee, but it took a long time. Yes, it did. Okay, so... Repeat your top 10 campaign. So take the next 4 to 12 weeks, run it over again. As you do this, you're going to find out this worked really well. You know, this, uh, this balsa wood airplane, you know, it's easy to stick in a box. There's, you know, reasonable ways to get hold of them. We found a new supplier for them. It, it all works. Um, all of that stuff is, is pretty cool. So that's a wonderful thing. Um, you may find parts of this process that don't work so well. Maybe, you know, when you make that phone call, that is not your thing. You know, you're not really mm -hmm. able to do that all that well. Um, you stumble and fumble in phone calls, so you send an email instead. So there's lots of ways that you can improve this process. You just want to make sure that all the steps are there. And actually, uh, even if you stumble through the thing, you'll do the next one better. You will get better, I promise. <laughs> You know, any, you yeah, sometimes it's a matter of making yourself do the thing that you hate the most and then it becomes the thing that you like the most. That was my problem with short field landings, hated short field landings. Um, could not get that to work no matter what I did. Over a 50 foot obstacle. Yeah, the 50, yeah, exactly. The 50 foot obstacle, the short field landing, had the hardest time with that. But then it became my favorite thing to do once I figured it out. So that happens as well with sales. Um, skills and sales tasks. Once you get good at something, you start to look forward to it and you start to realize, wow, I'm not, I don't suck. <laughs> <laughs> I can actually do that. And, you know, by following an outline or getting some help or getting some coaching, you can usually get over that obstacle. There you go. Pun intended. And uh, get much better at that particular skill. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, that is ABM in a nutshell. And that is how it works for aviation, and that's how we've been making it work for clients for a million years before it was called ABM. True. Right? Okay. Not about a million years, but for quite a while. Right. Okay. Never exaggerate. <laughs> I've told you a million times never to exaggerate. Exactly. Okay. We have been, um, basically ever since we started, we were focusing on long cycle, <coughs> small list campaigns. 
so you know that's not exaggerating. But um, if you are interested in uh, getting better at sales, getting better at marketing, uh, we have a group of people that is in the same boat and we're all working on learning new technologies, new skills, new tools, new networking uh, opportunities and things like that. Um, we'd love to have you join us and if you join us by January 31st, then you'll be included in our Aviation Sales Basics course, which is a 12 unit course. Usually takes people 12 weeks to complete and it includes a lot of interaction with us as well. So. Uh -huh. Uh, that's a lot of fun to do and I promise at the end of 12 weeks you will be a much better salesperson and uh, you can't help but improve <laughs> right. right okay and it's also uh, you know includes our online course and coaching so it doesn't matter where you are it doesn't matter what time zone you're in it doesn't matter any of that stuff we will make it work for you <clears throat> right a uh, very famous sales guy so Go sell this, more stuff. Yeah, America needs the business, which is true, but he also said, mm -hmm. if you're determined to learn, mm -hmm. nobody can stop you. Mm -hmm. Exactly. If you are determined not to learn, <clears throat> nobody can help you. Uh, but if you are determined to learn, then nobody can stop you. And, you know, those are the kinds of folks that we have in our group, which makes it so much more fun. Yep. Right? And America does need the business, so thank you, and we will see you next time. Absolutely.